time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And if you happen to catch Tech Talk last week, you'd know that my poor Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone with an XLR interface finally bit the dust. Rest in peace, my precious mic. So I saw this as an opportunity to upgrade my equipment. Now currently my audio setup consists of three pieces of hardware. The first one is a preamp for my microphone made by Art. It's the Art Tube MP. It is a USB audio interface that actually has a tube amplifier in it to make your voice sound very radio-like. Now, I really liked the preamp for a long time, but it has some problems with generated distortion and noise over the USB bus, and Jay has complained about it on Tech Talk numerous times, and I have to wiggle the cable and unplug it and plug it back in and discharge it and ground it to get the damn thing to work right. Now, my second piece of hardware is the sound card, which is an external Mayflower Electronics O2 DAC and amp. Now, this thing is an amazing headphone amplifier, and the DAC in it is crystal clear and noise-free. That being said, though, I want to have the audio integrated into my mixer board, which is what we're going to do today. That way I have less hardware on my desk. I can still use the O2 for my headphones when I'm listening to music and stuff like that, but all the general audio from the computer and everything can be routed through a mixer board. And that brings me to my third piece of hardware, which is my Mackie mixer board that I've been using forever that does not have a USB interface on it, which means I have tons of cables routing into it and out of it from the sound card, from the microphone amplifier, into my headphones, and it's become kind of a rat's nest. So my goal is to get rid of those three pieces of hardware and replace them with this. I have in my hands a Yamaha MG10XU, which is a great prosumer mixer board that has a USB audio interface, it has a DAC, and it has the microphone preamp built right into it. Now being a DAC, it's also gonna act as my sound card, which is gonna give me a lot more flexibility in how I move the sound back and forth between the computer without having to run a bunch of analog cables. Now we're gonna be replacing the dead AT2020 Audio-Technica microphone with what I have here. This is a Rode NT1. This is a much more professional microphone than the AT2020 with a much lower noise floor. And I'm really curious to see how it sounds when I have it all put together. Now Audio-Technica being the awesome company they are messaged me and said they're gonna send me an AT2050 to try out to replace the dead AT2020. And I'm gonna try that microphone out also when I receive it. This is gonna be the mic that I'm gonna be using for now. So let's see how it works. All right, well, I literally have less than 40 minutes before I'm getting on a live stream with some friends, which means I have 40 minutes to shoot this video, get this all set up and working. Let's do it. Now, guys, I picked this up on Amazon and I have an affiliate link down in my video description. And I also found one that's the same price that comes with a lot of expensive extra cables. So here are two XLR cables and here are two conventional patch cables. So I think that's great because the price wasn't anymore and I got a bunch of cables with it, which is perfect. All right, let's crack her open. As always, bat knife stores under my desk on a magnet. All right, we're on the clock here. We got to get the stuff set up quick. We have a manual. We have a power brick. This thing is actually pretty serious looking. And we have the mixer board. Eh. Ooh, it even has screw mounts so you can mount it to stuff. That's cool. And there she is. It's actually a lot smaller than I thought, guys. That's good, because I do not have a lot of room on my desk. Now you can see there is the magical USB port where we plug it into the computer, and then we have the place to hook up the power, and then we have all of the awesome stuff, like all of the mic connectors, uh, all of the stuff so we can adjust all of the EQ on everything. We even have effects on this one, so I can do really crazy effects with my microphone. I'm looking forward to screwing with Jay with that. World's fastest unboxing, bam! All right guys, time for the microphone. Here we have the Rode NT1. So we're gonna go ahead and open this bad boy up. Oh, bad knife. <laughs> Wow, that had very little tape on it. The microphone right there, I can already tell you, it's actually very heavy. That's, boy, you could do some exercise with that sucker. All right, looks like we have a, the world's thickest manual for a microphone. Ooh, look at this, we have a fancy bag. A bag, guys, with little gold strings. Ooh, that's what makes it fancy. I think it's because the condenser inside or whatever is actually coated in gold. And the pop shield, which the pop shield on this is very unique. I plan to try it and see if it works better than my weird, like, pantyhose one I'm using. And that is the Epic shock mount that I think I already broke, hold on. Nope, I didn't break it, all's good. So that's the shock mount that actually holds the microphone. And then the microphone just sits in just like this. And then there should be a pop shield in there. There it is. And the pop shield has two layers of a metallic, it looks like aluminum or something. So the pop filter just goes right in front like that. And then the microphone right here. So here's the microphone side by side. You can see this one's actually quite a bit smaller. God, that feels good in the hand though. You know what I'm saying? Just very, very firm, very long. 
I just like to feel the shaft. Solid. Ladies. All right, so here's the new mixer board next to the old mixer board. You can see the new one is just a little bit wider but almost the same footprint. So that, that's great. I don't have to rearrange my whole desk and move my SLA 3D printer and all that stuff. Don't worry, review coming soon on this bad boy. It's about the coolest thing I've, I've ever tested. You guys, you guys are gonna like this a lot. All right, so it's time to rip out this amp right here and this mixer board and replace it and then get rid of this old microphone and put in this new microphone. We gotta do it in record time because I seriously got like a couple of minutes before I start live streaming. All right, so out with the old, here we have the microphone. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that. Hopefully keep it from falling behind the desk somehow. Then I'm gonna unplug these guys right here, which actually come from the O2 DAC. Then I'm gonna unplug the line outs, which actually come over here and go into the Z5500 Logitech speakers. And then last but not least, we're gonna unplug the headphones. And now our mixer board is free. Let's unplug power and we're good. This thing's done. All right, now I gotta climb under the desk and get all these cables out. All right, so let's plug everything back in. Here we have the microphone. So there's my microphone cable. Now here's the line level outputs to the speakers. So we're gonna go ahead and plug those in right here. And you can switch between line and USB. We actually want USB, so we're gonna plug that in. So that means that the sound's coming from the USB and not from the audio in right there, because you can run an analog source into it, like a cell phone or something if you want to listen to music. Now, even though we're not gonna be using the objective sound card, except for with headphones, I'm still gonna go ahead and plug it in so that I can mix it in if I wanna play something through it later. So we'll go ahead and run that into line five. And last but not least, the headphones. Wow, everything was right where it was on the other board, so that made it really easy. Now the last thing we're gonna do is take the USB cable from the old tube amp, which I was using for my microphone before, and now we're gonna plug it into the back of the mixer board. And now the computer can detect it as new hardware. All right, let's go ahead and slide it back and clean it up. All right, we're all good to go and hooked up. Now I just gotta configure it on the computer. All right guys, so I removed the old tube amp. Everything is hooked up now through the Yamaha mixer board. When I plugged in the USB cable, the computer asked me for the driver. So I had to go to Yamaha's webpage and actually download the Windows 10 driver. And it looks like there's very active driver development for this mixer board, which is fantastic. It was dead simple to set up. And the nice thing about the USB audio interface is that all of the tweaking that I do to the microphone to affect the bass and the treble on it, uh, all of the EQ stuff that I do on the mixer affects how it sounds on the computer, which I think is awesome. Now I've opened up Adobe Audition and what I'm gonna do is synchronize the sound from the microphone with the camera so that I can show you guys some of the features. Now, right now you're hearing me on the Rode NT1 with just the default settings, everything in the middle, the compressor is turned all the way down and the EQ is completely flat. So this is the most natural sound of the Rode NT1 microphone. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of an off axis test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You can see that it has a pretty wide pickup pattern, which is awesome. Now there's minimal background noise being picked up in the room and you can adjust the noise floor to take a lot of that out. So if my air conditioner is running, I can move the microphone closer and then just drop the noise floor down until you don't hear that AC anymore, but it still picks up my voice clear. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys the compressor that's built into the mic. So now I'm gonna show you guys the compressor that's actually built into this thing. It's really cool. So let me give you an example. If I'm sitting here and I go, hey guys, 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 hey guys. So that's with no compression. Let me turn the compressor up to its max setting. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Hey guys, 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 hey guys. Now the compressor keeps me from clipping when I get really, really loud and keeps the noise uh, very compressed in a single volume spectrum. So for example, if I say, hi, how's it going guys? Right now I'm whispering, right now I'm whispering way away from the microphone. Right now I'm whispering up close to the microphone. Hey, 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 hey. You can see the volume changes are a lot more subtle. Now let me turn the compressor off. Hey, 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 hey. Check, check. So depending on the environment you're in and how how boisterous you are with your voice, the compressor is awesome. And since it's an analog dial, you can tune it exactly where you want it to get the intended effect. Now let's say I wanna add a little more bass to my voice. And also keep in mind guys, this is recording live through USB as a microphone in Windows inside of Adobe Audition CC uh, 2015, which is the software suite I'm using. So now I've just added more bass into my voice just by turning a dial. I can also do for the mid and the treble. So I've added a lot more treble into my voice now. 
you can clearly hear the difference. So the real nice feature of this mixer board is it has four of those inputs. So you can, in theory, hook up four microphones to this thing and adjust all of their levels independently, and they would all be recorded as one incoming audio stream on the PC. All right, so now I have the compressor turned up about halfway. Now, one of the features that I thought was a total gimmick on this was the built-in sound effects, because I figured any kind of effect generation that I wanted to do, I could do in post on the computer. I was like, why would I need to do it in real time? But then I thought to myself, how awesome would it be to screw a J? on Tech Talk for a change. He's always playing music and doing stuff in the background, and I'm always powerless to do things. So I'm going to bring my game now. Check out some of these cool effects. How's, How's it going, going guys? guys? This, this is my space, space voice, and, and this, this is all done in absolute real time with no delay. I can hear myself in the headset perfectly. Now, now what's nice about that is you're not going to speech jam yourself. You can also turn the analog dial to change the effect, and there's 24 different effects in total. Now, this is the radio voice effect, so you can make yourself sound like an old FM or AM radio. You can see by turning the dial, you can change it into different spectrums, and it sounds completely different. So this is like, hey, guys, how you doing? Welcome to 105.1, the end. Ah, I don't even know if that's a real station. So you got a lot of adjustability. Now, this sounds horrible. Nobody would listen to a radio station that sounds like this, but it's still kind of a cool effect. So this is probably one of my favorite filters. I sound like Fractal Josh now. And I can also turn it to the other end of the spectrum. Now I'm a part of the Lollipop Guild. Now because it's analog, I can adjust it anywhere I want in that spectrum to sound however I want. This is still like a little bit of a deeper voice. Now, what I want to illustrate to you guys is all the effects that you're hearing are in real time through the mixer board, and I even hear myself with the modification through the headset while I'm talking. There's no delay, that's why I'm not speech jamming myself, and there's no software on the computer producing this effect. It's all hardware inside of the mixer board. You can also apply this effect to any channel on the mixer that you want. So you can apply this to dialogue coming in from recorded clips, you can apply it to music, you can do all kinds of things. And there's 24 different effects, and each one of the effects has an analog range that can adjust how that effect is applied. I can, I can also, also turn, turn the knob. Now, now I'm speech jamming. jamming. Okay. So that's adding a delay to my, to my voice, voice, which is which speech is jamming, jamming me. I don't, I don't know, know why you would, why use, you would this. use this. But as you guys can tell, the Rode NT1 is a beautiful sounding mic. Even with the compression completely turned off or turned on, it doesn't matter. It has a very, very clear pickup. And I can even hear that in my headset. The difference between this mic and the Audio-Technica AT2020 that I was using are night and day. Now, now you got to realize this microphone is nearly four times the cost of the AT2020. So that's to be expected. But this is definitely a broadcast quality microphone. And as you can tell, the pop filter on it works amazingly well. So now I have the ability to tweak all of the settings of my audio in real time by just turning the knobs. I don't have to mess around with the software inside of Windows to set the levels on the microphone. I don't have to go in and color the sound using the EQs that are built into the various programs. I can do everything on the mixer board for that channel. And I can even mix two different microphones separately so that if I have somebody else here and I need to add a little bit more bass to their voice or bring their level up because they are a softer talker, I can totally do that. Now, apparently you can control this mixer board through an iPad app. I haven't tried that functionality yet, but I will in the future and get back to you guys. Again, I'm under huge time constraints since I leave tomorrow morning to head to World Maker Faire in New York. But I wanted to get this video done for you guys first. The mixer board is also a DAC, otherwise known as a digital to analog converter otherwise known as a sound card. So not only is it a microphone amplifier, it's also a sound card for outputting sound, and it actually has a very clean DAC. I listened to it both on headphones and with the Logitech uh, Z5500 speaker system, and I didn't hear any noise or any hiss, which is a hallmark of a good DAC, and the sound quality is decent. And you see right now, the board is actually sending the sound over to the Logitech through the mixer, through the audio out. Now there's two sets of audio out, so you can actually run two different sets of speakers plus headphones. So you could have a set of studio monitors, your surround sound speakers, so to speak, just stereo left and right, uh, or your headphones. And you can have them all running at the same time and mix their volumes differently. Now the USB channel on the mixer board is just like the other channels where you can add and remove bass and treble. So that's a lot more bass. And then that's kind of a dead sound. And that's right in the middle. You can also apply effects to that channel. Turn in a knob. And you can turn the effects off. 
So the Yamaha MG10 XU mixer board is fantastic, guys. It replaces my need for a separate external sound card. It replaces my need for having a dedicated preamp for the microphone. It has tons of effects. You can independently control the sound and EQ of each channel. And it has a built-in microphone compressor, which is fantastic if you're doing broadcast work where you're constantly moving closer or far away, or you're being incredibly loud and incredibly quiet as a part of your persona, and you want to even that all out. Now, a lot of these things you can do in post when you're recording audio, but to be able to do them live and in real time is a real treat. Plus, it frees up a ton of space on my desk. And when I'm doing live streams, I can tune things much faster by just moving a couple of knobs and making marks on my favorite spot on the board versus actually going going in and modifying the software. So guys, I would highly, highly recommend the Yamaha mixer board. The build quality on it isn't phenomenal. I noticed when I plug some things into the back that there is a little bit of wiggle on the electronics inside the enclosure. And if you push down on the knobs, you can feel a little bit of flex to the board inside. So I wouldn't say that the build quality is amazing, but the sound quality on it is phenomenal, both on the preamp for the microphone and the output to my speakers and headphones. I will highly recommend this to anybody that's looking to live stream and wants to have greater control over the audio experience. Now I have nothing but praise for the Rode NT1 microphone. This thing is really expensive, but Kevlar Condom recommended it to me and I'm glad that he did because the audio quality on it is so crisp and the pickup on it is so precise. Even the smallest little details and sound, it picks up fantastic. So it's great for voice, it's great for instruments, it's great for sound effects. I'm gonna use it to record all the sound effects that I'm gonna do when I get back from Maker Faire for you to replace your Windows sound profile with the voice of Barnacle. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this quick and dirty unboxing and setup of the Yamaha mixer board and the NT1 Rode microphone. They work together in harmony. Again, the links are in the video description about the microphone and the mixer board kit that comes with the extra cables at no extra charge. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below in the comments or come over and tweet me on Twitter. I am at Barnacles. If you guys like these fast unboxings and watching me just get everything up and running from scratch, let me know and I'll keep on doing them. All right, guys, I gotta get ready for Maker Faire because I literally get on a plane in like six hours and I haven't even started packing yet. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you in New York if you're there. If not, I will catch you some other time later. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter, I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.